the whole life of the promised Messiah was illumined with the light of heaven. And the same light, though with less luster, may brighten the countenance and demeanor of all who strive to resemble his likeness. But it will always be dim as long as irritability overshadows the personality. It behoves every spiritual wayfarer to overcome this enemy of serenity. The fight may be hard, but the prize is priceless. Debauchers and degenerates have become reformed and cleansed of all former evil habits. Drunkards have become dedicated servants of God. Lifelong smokers have discarded the tobacco habit. Savages have become saints. No one should make vain excuses for his irritability. It can be overcome if one cares to exert oneself and turn to God for help. Where there is a will, there is always a way. All things within reason are possible. Positive thinking is a transforming power and it becomes a tremendous power with the aid of prayer. It is to the advantage of every spiritual wayfarer to make an all-out effort to suppress and overcome irritability because this characteristic is incompatible with the spirit of holiness. In order to treat a disease, a good doctor will seek its cause and deal with the root of the trouble. The spiritual wayfarer is also recommended to do the same. There are various causes for irritability and one of them is incorrect dieting. There are those who overeat and suffer nervous strain when a little hungry. Most people consume material which is poisonous or harmful to the body. They crave for stimulants to overcome their trembling nerves and they suffer mental and physical irritation when they're not able to get them. Tea and coffee drinking has become a national habit in many countries, although neither in themselves contain any food value. Housewives sip innumerable cups of tea throughout the day, then wonder why their nerves are on edge. Tobacco is another poison which casts its deadly effects upon the nerves and organs of the body, and neither does the soul escape its lethal fumes. The smoker and the chewer of tobacco live with frayed nerves, making them susceptible to headaches and outbursts of irritability, especially when the poisonous weed is not available to alleviate their self-imposed agony. Self-mastery is the golden key to spiritual progress, and the old adage is still true that he who can conquer himself is greater than he who can conquer a city. When irritable, people are inclined to say and do things on the spur of the moment which they later regret. But harsh words and wrong actions often cannot be retrieved. Bitter words carve indelible impressions on the minds of others. A careless outburst of invective has estranged the best of friends, husbands and wives, parents and children. The thread which binds together human relationships is extremely brittle. It wears, tears and snaps with ease. There is the authentic case of a man and woman who celebrated their 50th wedding anniversary. One week later, they sued for divorce. The irritable person lives in the fire of hell. He who desires to walk with the saints must master his passions. And irritability is one of them. Laziness. The holy prophet of Islam said, O God, I seek thy protection against want of means and laziness. Laziness withholds progress in any endeavor, 
and in spiritual development there is no exception. Sleep and rest are essential for health and efficiency. Eight hours sleep daily has been recommended as ideal, although many prefer to do with less. Many of the world's great geniuses spent half their nights absorbed in work. Napoleon once said that 22 hours out of 24 ought to be usefully employed. He lived his life to the full in which he accomplished Herculean exploits through sleepless labor as the following incident reveals. An officer entering Napoleon's room a couple of hours after midnight to communicate the glad tidings found much to his astonishment Napoleon dressed and seated at his table with maps, books and charts spread out before him. What? inquired his friend. Are you not in bed yet? In bed? Napoleon replied. I have had my sleep and am already risen. What? So early, the other rejoined. Yes, continued Napoleon, so early. Two or three hours sleep are enough for any man. He was, in fact, a personification of the following short poem. The heights by great men reached and kept were not attained by sudden flight but they, while their companions slept, were toiling upward in the night. Similarly, in the spiritual field, the prophets and holy men of God have spent and do spend the greater part of their nights in prayer and labor. The promised Messiah once said, Who told our brethren that life is long? There is no season for death. It may overtake you at any time. So we must value whatever time we have. We will not have these times again. There will remain only stories of them. The promised Messiah is reported to have said that he regretted so much time is wasted in the toilet and it would have been well even if that time could be spent in the service of Islam. He condemned laziness in no uncertain terms. He said, Everyone among you who relaxes and becomes lazy shall be thrown out of the community as a dirty thing is discarded and thrown out. He shall die with regret in his heart and he shall not be able to injure God in any way. Laziness is one of the reasons why Muslims are negligent in regular observance of the five daily prayers and as a result their spiritual growth is stunted. But even the offering of prayers is of little value unless performed with attention and with the spirit of earnestness. The promised Messiah has advised, offer your five daily prayers with such concentration and awe of mind as though you were seeing God in front of you with your physical eyes. A true believer would no more think of missing his prayers than a hungry man would think of missing his meals. Hazrat Mirza Bashiruddin Mahmud Ahmed, the second successor of the Promise of Messiah, once issued a pronouncement that if an Ahmadi Muslim intentionally forsook only one prayer over a period of ten years, then he could not be considered a true devotee of Ahmadiyyat or the true Islam. The promised Messiah has affirmed that some effort is required to rise early in the morning before sunrise, perform ablution and offer prayers. But without self-discipline there can be no worthwhile progress. The truth applies to spiritual development no less than it does to physical development or to advancement in any secular field. 
A Muslim should be anxious to make every moment of his life worthwhile and to avoid idleness. And in order to achieve this purpose, he must keep his mind and body alert and virile. All types of, of slovenly behavior should be eradicated. The manner in which he sits, stands and moves about reveals significant points of character. Slouching in armchairs and sofas, leaning up against some object for support, shuffling along the streets are unsalutary habits, are unsalutary habits indicative of laziness. Muscles and mind are interrelated, for when the muscles become lazy, the mind becomes lazy, and vice versa. The span of human life is incomparable with the age of the universe, and one-third of that is usually passed in sleep. So time for up and doing is very short. It has been said that idleness is the sepulcher of a living man. The ambitious spiritual wayfarer knows that laziness is an obstacle to his progress and he is watchful never to be the victim as expressed in the following lines. He slept beneath the moon. He basked beneath the sun. He lived a life of going to do and died with nothing done. Pride. The Holy Prophet said, God has revealed to me, saying, Show humility so that no one may rise above another, nor pride himself above another. Pride has been the downfall of many a spiritual leader. It is a subtle destroyer of faith, which does its hellish work slowly and silently like creeping cancer. Time witnesses pillar after pillar of faith crashing to the ground until eventually the inner temple of God collapses in a heap of rubble. No doubt a new temple can be built on the ruins of the old, but not without a sincere rededication to God, because the message of the Holy Quran offers hope to those who have fallen or gone astray. The Holy Quran says, those who repent and amend and hold fast to Allah and are sincere in their obedience to Allah, these are among the believers, and Allah will soon bestow a great reward upon the believers. Dignity and self-respect should not be mistaken for pride. Hathrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmed, the promised Messiah, has said that pride is like setting up gods with God, the setting up of equals with God. He has said that it is a despicable characteristic and has advised everyone to make sure that no vestige of this guilt dwells within them. Disobedient to those who are in authority is a common demonstration of pride. It has led to the spiritual downfall of many prominent Muslims. Islam teaches that it is incumbent to obey those who are placed in authority, providing one is not called upon to do something contrary to the teachings of Islam. In religious affairs, it matters not who is appointed imam or leader. He must be obeyed. The Holy Prophet has said, Hear and obey, even though a person with a head as small as a dried raisin be appointed to rule over you. Pride sometimes enters the hearts of public speakers and lecturers who are more concerned in impressing their audience with their supposed eloquence than they are in impressing the significance of their message upon their hearts. The promised Messiah spoke on this matter once at an annual conference in Cardion. Some speakers are under the impression that the louder and faster they talk, the more favorable impression they make upon their listeners. But the truth is that no cultured and intelligent person 
is deceived by their veneer. When the vibrations of their voices are empty of heartfelt magnetism. While it is not denied that loudness of voice is often necessary, especially when addressing a large gathering without the aid of a microphone, nevertheless, what counts most is the tone of the voice, which should ring with earnest and sincere vibrations, free of any streak of veneer. <laughs> 